how long were the Leafs working uh, on the Labushkin deal? I wouldn't say that long, uh, but, you know, kind of typical of the way Brad Trilliving does his business. You know, he would have had a number of different calls with Pat Verbeek of the Anaheim Ducks, um, you know, Tanny Barriere of the Philadelphia Flyers. Just go down the list of all the available right shot defensemen. I think where it really started to pick up steam is pretty obvious, and that was when Calgary moved Chris Tanev to the Dallas Stars. And then at that point, Trilliving decided, okay, well, I can't, you know, leave the trade process here without filling a significant hole on that right side. And they all along had interest in Labushkin. Familiarity, reliability, can play with Morgan Riley, you know, just an honest hockey player, and the price was right. So when you look at uh, the face value of, of how that deal came together, to give up a third and a sixth for Ilya Labushkin and 25% salary, I mean, it's the way of the land right now, the way teams are constructing these deals with the third-party brokers. But I think that that's a real efficient bit of business by Brad Trilliving and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hey, Darren, obviously glad to have you on Carter Hutton here. And yeah. uh, I think what you touched on is so great, like the way the businesses works now and what goes on with these three-way trades. As you see it, you know, they add this piece. Are they done? Or is there something else that the Leafs need to do or want to do or you think is still in the market here? Uh, they're still in the market. Uh, and I, I think that just about anything is, is possible. It's all, you know, cost prohibitive, of course. I think they'd like to add another defenseman. And not just because we all saw Mark Giordano go down in a dangerous play last night. You hope the best for the veteran defenseman. Um, but I think that if there's an opportunity to add a depth guy, then most definitely they'll do that. I don't want to close the book on the idea of adding a depth forward, though, either. You know, when you get to this point with the trade deadline looming, it's all about cost effectiveness. So if if there's a player that maybe we haven't even speculated on that all of a sudden lands at your feet and you can make it work, not a defenseman, but a forward, well, you make it work. I mean, it's whatever is there that makes your team uh, a little bit better. So I don't think that the Toronto Maple Leafs are done. I don't anticipate that they're in the market for anything significant, but I do think that they'll continue to add. How close were they on Chris Tanev? Well, close in the sense that it was insinuated that Trilliving was going to lob his first round pick into the mix, but he never did. So that was what that Craig Conroy and the Calgary Flames were expecting and, and hoping for. And we know that the Maple Leafs don't have a second round pick for three years. So it became problematic. And, you know, Toronto did not want to cut bait on Easton Cowan or Fraser Minton. So were they involved? Yeah, they were involved, but it would have taken that first round pick and Pure Living just did not want to give it up. With all, he loved Chris Tanner. There weren't, you know, there's not too many general managers around the National Hockey League that don't love the character uh, and and the game that Chris Tanner can play. But, you know, Toronto's draft cupboard is basically empty. So if you're throwing out first round draft picks, like traditionally we see this time of year, then you need to be certain. And, and it's not like Toronto wasn't willing to trade the first, and they're still willing to trade the first, but they need to get back a piece uh, or pieces that at least have a little bit of term and a little bit of security moving forward. Yeah, so touching on that, like with Tanev gone, does that take Hannafin out of the question because he would have to be a rental player or like a sign and trade, or they just shift their focus to something totally new now? Yeah, totally new. Um and look, I mean, you have to to kind of consider the history of Brad Trilliving, the Calgary Flames, and Noah Hannafin. I mean, he traded for Noah Hannafin with the Carolina Hurricanes. But I don't think that they look at Noah Hannafin in Toronto. I know they don't as the right fit. And the cost would be too significant. When I think of Noah Hannafin, I'm looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm looking at the Boston Bruins. I wonder about Boston. I think Boston feels like they got burned a little bit. You know, leading up to the trade deadline, they made some significant ads um, they, they paid some futures to acquire the pieces that they did last year and they got bounced early in the playoffs. So I think Don Sweeney is trying to be as careful as he can, but man, that's a hungry group there too. Right. So maybe Cam Neely comes down the hall and says, would you just make the trade <laughs> or ownership of the Boston Bruins? I mean, we can all envision that, um, Julian Brees won the Tampa Bay lightning, man. They know that window is closing to win another Stanley cup. Do they have the assets to acquire Noah Hannafin? And, and look, what is the true rental price for this player? You know, if, if you're considering a, a, an extension 
well, then that changes the dynamic of that trade. But I think the next defenseman to go um, is Sean Walker, the Philadelphia Flyers. And I want to qualify this a little bit because as I tweeted uh, yesterday, I don't know, well, this morning, I can't remember. Um, there are contract talks that are ongoing with the Philadelphia Flyers and the agents for both Sean Walker and Nick Sealer. But you do have to continue to have trade conversations and negotiations because there'll be a breaking point in the in the extension negotiations and you have to balance that with what the trade market looks like and there's a buzz around Sean Walker this morning and I'm not surprised by that he's small that's the feedback you get he's small but he's very competitive he's an excellent teammate he's incredibly smart and look at how well he's played for the Philadelphia Flyers so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody now steps up on him is that a guy you anticipate the least being involved in I don't think so. I think Ilya Labushkin is their right shot guy. Um, and again, based on what I'm hearing around the, the the trade speculation on Sean Walker, I think the price will be, you know, they, it'll be too much for Turleving and the Toronto Maple Leafs. If, if they bolster that blue line further, I think it'll be more of a depth position. I wanted to ask you too, Dregs, about the whole Toronto tax conversation with Calgary. Like, here we go again with yeah. this combo because they didn't get Chris Tanev. Do you, do you subscribe to it? Like, are people making too much of this whole story that Calgary won't trade with Toronto because of Brad True Living? Yeah, I, I, I don't believe that for a second. I don't. And if True Living had a, a second round draft pick, we're probably not having this conversation. And Tanev is a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. It just, it, it wasn't a fit because... And, and I don't mean this to sound critical of Kyle Dubas because Kyle Dubas, as general manager of the Leafs, was trying to win a Stanley Cup. So he he dealt away a lot of quality draft picks, you know, in an effort to to make the team better. But that left Brad Trolliving with very little to work with. And, and that's just the situation. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that there's some history there between Murray Edwards, the owner of the Calgary Flames, and, and Brad Trolliving. But I, I must ask that question five times in the last two months of my Calgary sources, and they assured that that was not the case. End of the day, guys, you know, the owners have to allow their hockey operations people to do their jobs. And it's always about getting the best deal possible. And clearly Conroy felt like that best deal was uh, involving the New Jersey Devils and Tanif ultimately ending in Dallas. Yeah. So Darren, for me, like the, the East is just seems so open this year compared to, you know, there hasn't really anyone, we touched on Florida being good in Boston, but no one's really been like that absolute powerhouse. And yeah. with Austin Matthews kind of in that wheelhouse of like, you know, kind of win now mentality yeah. where they're at, he's at his peak, you know, does that first rounder come into play this year? Or is that something we, we don't see move? We just kind of just wondering like where they're at. You think the leaves like winning now? Yeah. Well, the, the, I think they have to be in that win now mode. Right. Uh, because when you look to the near future, you know, you see the the contract battles that they may or may not have to have with Mitch Marner and then John Tavares. I mean, we know the salary cap is going up next year, but that's basically been gobbled up by Nylander and Matthews. So Toronto is going to be in a real dra uh, uh, salary cap vice next year. You know, the cap will go up, you know, significantly following that. Um, but when you've got the talent level that the Maple Leafs have, especially up front, doesn't it feel like you have to try and win every single year? Because if you don't, a couple of years, three years from now, you'll be looking back and you'll be like, geez, we should have really dug in. And then that's that's what everybody is in it for, including the managers and ownership, is to win, to hoist that Stanley Cup. So I'm, I'm doubtful that the first rounder will get traded. But, fellas, we're a week outside of March 8th. We don't know. We think we know. We've got trade bait graphics all over the place that tell us, you know, here are the players in play, but we still don't know who the sellers are by definition. I mean, look at the standings. We still don't know, you know, all of a sudden a player like Pavel Buchnevich, you know, from the St. Louis Blues pops onto your radar and, and it takes a first round draft pick to acquire him. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe you try and make the money work because it makes so much sense. So I don't think they'll trade that pick, but, I can't be certain until the bell rings next Friday.
Like, Dregs, I'm right there with you. I think there's a bunch of teams, like, in the gray area right now which don't know what they are. Like, I would throw Washington in that conversation. Like, they think they're in it, but are they? Like, Seattle, say like, St. Louis, teams 100%. like that. And yeah. I think if players and those teams define themselves as sellers, I think all hell could break loose. Because, yeah. I mean, with the least specifically, there's some guys on St. Louis, guys on Seattle, and teams like that, even Washington, that could make a lot of sense to add, uh, namely on the blue line, no? No question about that. And guys, I think it's going to be fun watching the power struggle in the next week for some of the top forwards that are in play here. You know, as I reported yesterday, you've got Mark Stone, who's out for the rest of the regular season. He's questionable for the playoffs. Well, do we honestly think that Kelly McCrimmon and the Vegas Golden Knights aren't going to utilize that cap space? Of course they are in an effort to try and defend the Stanley Cup. So what are the forwards that we're looking at? You know, I mentioned Butch Navich. You know, Jordan Eberle, to your point, Nick, you know, Seattle isn't trading anyone if you talk to sources who have tried to lure pieces out of Seattle. But, you know, they do have to look at the contract of Jordan Eberle. Um, there's an appetite to sign him, so that might take him out of play. What's New Jersey doing with Tyler Toffoli? You know, the Devils are, are they're out of it, but – they're not entirely out of it in terms of being a wild card team here. So, you know, do you trade away a guy that's got 25 plus goals for you at this stage of the year? You know, so those players are in play. I'm looking at Edmonton. I'm looking at Vegas. I'm looking for all the top teams. You know, the New York Rangers go down the list of all these really, really good teams that are trying to, uh, to add another top piece. I mean, I think it's going to be a fun week. <laughs> Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.